Hey guys, this is Nick and I already made this video about a year ago. Problem is, none of the alternatives I reviewed or recommended at that point are alive. Like, none of them are still up and running. Even the big one, like Canon's Arista, which was my favorite at the time, has closed down their door. So that's the issue in the cloud storage space. A lot of companies just don't survive very long. And this is why I wanted to revisit this and see why and how you might want to switch from Google Photos in 2021. So let's take a look at the alternatives right after this. This video is sponsored by Linode. Founded in 2003, Linode is the largest independent cloud service provider built on open source. If it runs on Linux, it runs on Linode. Multiple distros are available, including Ubuntu, CentOS, Alpine, and of course Arch. The multiple server configurations make any app or service flexible and scalable to host a website, set up your own personal VPN, create a Nextcloud instance, host a game server, and more. Linode offers 24-7 support any day of the year by phone or support ticket, regardless of your plan size. The simple pricing with monthly caps ensures that there is no hidden fees and a generous monthly transfer is built in, which means there is no large bill surprises like you get from AWS or Azure. Sign up today at linode.com slash Linux experiments to get your $100 in Linux server credits. The link is in the description. Oh, and before I forget, in addition to having great written documentation, Linode also just started their own YouTube channel where you can check out video tutorials and guides, information on Linux cloud computing, and guest appearances from various experts. Check them out at youtube.com slash Linode. So first, why would you want to replace Google Photos? Well, there's two solutions. Either you got burned by the fact that Google just did remove the unlimited storage option, or you just want to escape like the big tech companies and especially Google. Because Google Photos in itself is a pretty great service. It's got a lot of storage with your free Google account. You have some deep learning tools to automatically sort, categorize and search through your photos. And you can sync from your mobile device to your cloud online, which is a plus. It's a great service. The only issue is, as with all Google services, you're putting all your pictures in the hands of a company that has proven time and again that it just can't be trusted with your personal data. Basically, if you sign up for Google Photos, you give Google a license to use your pictures to do as they please. They could feed them to any machine learning algorithm, even external to your Google Photos account, they could do anything they want. So you're basically taking your own photos and your loved one's photos and just feeding them to Google to do with as they want. That's something that highly disturbs me. And if that's something that disturbs you, that's probably why you're watching this video as well. So let's take a look at some of the alternatives that we can find to Google Photos. Now, simply put, there are no full alternatives to Google Photos. Yep, that's it. You can just turn on the video. But if you want to stick with me, let me just explain what I mean by that. Google Photos has some deep learning algorithms baked in that allows you to search through your photos. For example, you type cat and it's going to give you all the photos that shows cats. That's a pretty handy feature when you need to search for something in a pinch. No other service that I know of has this kind of capabilities. So basically what you're going to get is storage, is syncing with your phone, your desktop and stuff like that, sometimes even unlimited storage and some categorization options, some photo modification options, but these deep learning tools and algorithms are not going to be present. Unless you're an iOS user. In that case, your alternative is very simple. If you're an Apple software or products user, you have access to iCloud Photos. It's a very good product that has some of the same capabilities as Google Photos and that you basically can pay for. It's pretty inexpensive. You can sync between your Mac, your iOS device, iPhone, iPads, whatever. It just works well. So if you're on iOS or if you're on the Mac, you should probably use Apple Photos. It works great. And Apple has proven time and again to be kind of good with privacy, not the best, but definitely not as terrible as Google. So if you're not an Apple product user, you have two routes you can go. The first one is if you really don't care about big tech, about privacy, about your data, what you want is just a super basic service that you can just sync to and not wonder about how it works or sending it up. In that case, there are a few alternatives that you can use. If you're more privacy conscious and you don't want to keep feeding the big tech corporations, that's the other solution that I can offer you. And it's one that you have to self host or to host on a cloud server. That's the one I picked because obviously I'm very sensitive about these issues. So let's see those two routes that you can take. 
So if you don't care about the big tech corporations, if you don't care about where your photos are located, what people are doing with them, then your best bet is probably Amazon Prime Photos. Amazon Prime Photos comes free with your Amazon Prime subscription. So basically for the same price, you get this photo storage solution, you get some free music streaming, you get some video streaming, and you get the same day delivery thing if you order stuff on Amazon. Basically, if you're an Amazon user, it's, it's free. It's basically included in your subscription already. And it's got unlimited photo storage, but for videos, it only has five gigabytes. So you're gonna have to pay for a little bit more storage if you're a heavy video user. The costs are all right. It's uh, 400 gigabytes, it's uh, two euros per month, and it's 10 euros per month for one terabyte. Kind of pricey, but it's all right for the storage you get. Amazon Prime Photos has an iOS and an Android application that you can use to automatically sync the photos you take with your smartphone to your cloud account, and you can get them back on your device using the Amazon Photos desktop app, that is if you're on Windows or Mac OS. If you're a Linux user like me, then no dice, you don't have the desktop application. You can still use the web interface, which is all right. It lets you sort photos through albums, download them, share them, even edit them with some pretty powerful tools, including filters, text, adjusting contrast, saturation, colors. Those are pretty good tools. But if you really want to have a sync solution between your Amazon Prime photos and your Linux desktop, you're gonna have to have to pay for a specific solution. The one I found is called Expand Drive. It's $50 for one-time purchase, and it lets you basically connect your Linux desktop or your Windows or Mac OS desktop to a lot of other storage services, including Amazon Drive for your Amazon Prime Photos, but also OneDrive, Box, Dropbox, etc. I would not recommend you do that. Just keep your photos in the cloud and download the new ones periodically. It's gonna save you a lot of money if you wanna go that way. So all in all, if you're not anti-Amazon or if you're already a Amazon Prime subscriber, there is no real reason not to go with Amazon Prime Photos. You get a good service with unlimited photo storage, okay priced video storage, and applications to sync back and forth between your desktop. If you're on Linux, it's gonna be a little bit trickier to sync your photos, but if you're on Linux, I think you'll be more interested with the more private route I'll discuss in a moment. If you really hate Amazon, and if you're a Windows user, for example, then you probably should go with OneDrive. The free OneDrive account is only five gigabytes, but for two euros a month, you can get 100 gigabytes. And if you subscribe to an Office 365 plan for seven euros a month, you can get one terabyte of storage, which is probably largely more than enough to store all your photos and videos, unless you have a huge, huge amount. In that case, the second solution I'm gonna talk about is going to be a lot better for you as well. So basically, these are your three options if you don't care about using a big tech corporation service. If you're an Apple user, you can use iCloud. If you're a Windows user, probably should use OneDrive. And if you're one of these users or anything else and you're already a Prime subscriber, just use Amazon Prime Photos. If you're more privacy conscious or you want to dabble with setting up a server or hosting your own stuff or you just don't want to give your data to some big tech corporations, then the second solution is for you. Now that second solution is obviously Nextcloud. Nextcloud is basically your own personal cloud. It includes everything you could expect, like tasks, calendars, email, documents, photos, and you can also add a ton of other applications that are available. You can even get a free online office suite like Collabora Office or Only Office. It's, it's a dream, honestly, it's a dream come true. This is a very powerful system. You can use it only to sync your photos and never access the web interface if you don't want to, but not using the other services would be a shame because they're pretty good. The Nextcloud also has iOS, Android, Windows, macOS, and Linux applications. This means that you can sync your photos from your smartphone to your desktop, whatever the smartphone or the desktop you want to use. And the good thing is, you can also sync the pictures or the documents or whatever to any folder on your desktop. You don't have to keep everything stored inside your Nextcloud folder. Nextcloud is open source and can be either self-hosted at home or hosted by a cloud provider. Basically, the difference is, do you want to have a server in your house that you have to maintain and you're responsible for, for the backups and to ensure that it runs smoothly? Or do you want to defer that to a cloud service provider and get some backups and some online help? Now, personally, I went with a cloud provider. I used Linode, obviously, because I love what they do and that's why they're a sponsor for this video and for the channel in general. 
and I went with an 80 gigabyte Linode, which cost me around $20 a month. So it's probably a lot more expensive than just hosting it at home, but it also means that I've got support, that I can handle it pretty easily, that I don't have to move around my house to take a look at how the server works. It's just easier for me to set it up. All this talk about setting up your own server and choosing between a plan, self-hosted, etc. can make it seem pretty complex, but in all fairness, it's pretty easy. When I set up my own server, I had zero experience dealing with any kind of server stuff. I'm not a developer, I'm not a system administrator, I have no knowledge of servers prior to doing this Nextcloud server. Basically, I already have made a video on how to set up your Nextcloud server. You can see it in the card up top right there. But I'm going to recap the main steps here. If you want more detail about each step, just take a look at that video. It explains it in a lot more detail. So the first step is to pick your Linux distribution. Obviously, you're going to use Linux on your server because it's free. And I would generally recommend you go with Ubuntu because it's going to make it a lot easier to do the next step. The second step is installing that distro on your server. So either you have started up a cloud instance, in that case, the install will already be done, or you are self-hosting your own server. In that case, you just pop in the USB key and install the server distro on the machine you decided to use. The third step is to install Nextcloud. And for that thing, there is just one way that is super easy, just use the snap package. In one line, you can get your Nextcloud instance up and running without any configuration. You could also try to install it manually, but it's a lot more convoluted, it takes a lot more time, and unless you really want to learn how to do it, there is no reason not to use the snap. So just use the command line sudo snap install Nextcloud, and you're good to go. And after that, all you need to do is connect to your server. So basically, your server doesn't have a domain name yet, so it's going to have a public IP address. To get that one, just use the terminal and type curl afconfig.me, it's going to return you your public IP address, which you can enter in any web browser and you'll get access to the Nextcloud web interface. And that's it. You are done. You can now access your Nextcloud server, you can now configure it, do anything you want. If you want to add more security though, I would recommend you buy a domain name, point it towards your IP address for your Nextcloud server, and secure it with HTTPS using a certificate. I also have a video that you can get in the corner up top to explain how to do this. It's also a pretty easy process. Again, I had no experience doing that before I did, and it only took me a few hours to completely install the next lab server. It was a very easy process to do. And that's it. Once you have that, you can just install the Nextcloud application on your smartphone, connect using the domain name that you rented, and then type in your username and password that you set up when you install your Nextcloud instance, and you're good to go. It will automatically upload all your pictures to your Nextcloud instant upload folder, which you can then sync back to your desktop using the desktop client. It's pretty easy, super simple. You're not getting the deep learning search features that Google Photos have, but you can sort through albums, even just by putting photos inside of folders, it's pretty easy to do, and you can find them back in your phone or on your desktop. Very simple. So here it is. These are your alternatives to Google Photos. So either you don't care about big tech corporations and you just want a simple solution. In that case, you go with iCloud if you're an Apple user, OneDrive if you're a Windows user, or Amazon Prime if you just want something or you're already a Prime subscriber or you do care about privacy and escaping big tech's grasp. And in that case, the only real good solution is to use your own Nextcloud server. And do remember that it doesn't just handle your photos. You can store any of your documents as well. It also doubles as a replacement for Google Drive, for example, or Google Gmail or Google Calendar or Google Tasks. It can just replace the whole Google ecosystem, more or less. You even get an online office suite. So. Give a try to Nextcloud. Honestly, you will be surprised at how good it is. That's what I've been using to run the channel, to run my work, and to run my personal files and photos, and I've been amazed by it. Just take a look. Take the time to try and install your own server. It's very easy to do. Don't be scared by the few steps that you need to take. And take a look at the videos that I mentioned. I also leave a link in the description so you can find them easier. Now, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't stay to like or dislike if you didn't. You can also subscribe and turn on notifications to get more videos like this one. If you really like the video and you want to help support the channel, you can also join my amazing Patreon subscribers and YouTube members and get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!